What's going on, everybody, and welcome to episode four of the Commander Crew. My name is Corey, and with me, as always, are my buddies Chris, Josh, and Eddie. And today, we're talking more C-19. Hello. How's it going? What's going on, guys? There it is. I have that. You can't see it, but I have the box right in front of the camera. So that's right. Today's the long-awaited episode, C-19 Naya, the Geared deck. So we're talking Naya today, all things Naya. So let me pull them up. All right, we're going to start off, as always, with the lead singer of the deck, Geared Conclave Exile. Geared Conclave Exile is 2 and Naya, so that's 2 generic, red, green, white, for a 2-5 legendary creature, Human Shaman. And he says, when Geared Conclave Exile enters the battlefield, create a 4-4 green rhino creature token with Trample. Whenever Geared attacks, populate. The token enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. So to populate, basically, you just create a token of a token you already have, uh, which is a pretty pretty evergreen mechanic for magic nowadays. Uh, so this, this is a populate deck, through and through. Uh... You missed it because it was in the bloopers. I said I don't like this deck very much, and I'm going to stick to it. It's not my favorite. I think it's a good deck. I just don't like it. So that's my impression. What do you guys think? I think you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was totally I, expecting I, someone to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you straight up. Um, yeah, I think you're crazy. I think this deck, uh, when I saw um, how it play out, you know? Yeah, I'm just going to say it. When I saw Josh playing it, it, was, yeah. uh, it looked fun as hell. Yeah. By the uh, way, by the way, this is uh, this video is coming out after the decks have already come out. Clearly, you saw the box in the beginning, and we actually have sat down and played these decks together in a gameplay video that hopefully will be coming out soon after this video. But all right, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, that's all right. This this it looked really fun uh, for him when when he was playing it. I will say it, it definitely needs some pieces. Hmm. Um, but uh, but overall, I think this is uh, this was a really fun deck from from the looks of it and then on top of that just building around him as a commander i think it could be a blast yeah yeah i think it's the strongest out of the box out of the four um the only issue that i found playing it is like after board wipes you're kind of like you have to you can't just keep playing like all your resources you kind of like have to keep stuff in your hand uh in case a board wipe happens so that way you can reestablish a a board cool. state, because if you, if you play everything and you're board white, man, you're just trying to top deck something or yeah. try to create something, to create a token, and just kind of go from there. But well, and you had that mimic, you had that fun. mimic vat too. So like, we would board wipe, and you would just keep creating that same oh, that, uh, creature. That cre- <laughs> yeah, we'll let you guys see uh, the video, but yeah, uh, uh, no, no spoilers, no spoilers. Yeah, but no spoilers. I had, I had a pretty, a pretty intense uh, O ring going. Yeah, Chris, what do you think? See, me personally, when I think populate, I don't think Naya. I think of uh, Blesnia. So it was a little surprising to have them uh, splash the red in there. Yeah. Uh, I feel that it would it could potentially be a lot more smooth forming if the deck was just straight red, um, green, white. It's interesting to see how they played the red in there. I don't think it's really tapped much into the red. I think that has the chaos aspect of tapping and attacking as opposed to just you populate right, right from there. Uh, so I did like that aspect on top of it. It's a solid body. Uh, it does have its uh, toughness is five, so it's like, it makes you think about what, what's going into it. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely can agree. It, it's it's almost like go all in and on the single uh, subject as opposed to going uh, different style. It is a very go wide deck. It yeah. is not Voltron in the sense whatsoever. Um, well, no, that's a box. Chris has to check. Is like, is it Voltron? Yeah. Is it Voltron? <laughs> no. uh, but it does formulate really well. I did like the overall presence of the deck and how it forms. Yeah. yeah I mean, I actually. Also, Oh, sorry, good. Good. Oh, one more thing I would like to wish about the deck is like find a way with Garrett. Besides just using Garrett to populate, you got I wish we could like more cards to make gotta tokens populate. of make a token of a creature you have like play like I don't know, like a Dragon Lord Jamoka and then find a way to make a, to- a token of him so you keep populating him or something, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, there are a bunch of uh red cards that do that. There's there actually are. There's actually a uh, red card in this deck. It was uh, what's it? I don't have the deck list up. It's called like Hate Mirror, if, if I remember yes. right. Yes, I didn't draw um, it. I don't think. 
Yeah, so if you, if you play that card, it, it makes a, a token copy of your opponent's creature, um, which is pretty cool. I think it's like four mana. So you you play hate that, mirage. it's brand new. Hate mirage. How much? Hate Mirage. Hate Mirage. Hate Mirage. Hate mirage. Hate mirage. That was close. The That's mirror image, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. So, so. Um, so, um, so yeah, it, it, it's like four mana, right? Yeah, it's three and a red, and it's a sorcery that says, choose up to two target creatures you don't control. For each of those creatures, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Those tokens gain haste and then exile them at the beginning of the next end step. So see, that's that's pretty sweet because yeah. you don't have to worry about exiling them if you're making copies uh, and populating uh, those particular tokens. Yeah. So to to Josh's point, if somebody's playing a, a dragon lord Dramaka, um, you you can literally make a copy of of that creature. And there's other other cards in red that allow you to do that to your own creatures too. Um, and um, while I, I hear you, Chris, when you were talking about the whole making it Selesnya and and how like because the the token the token populate deck is Tristani. Everybody knows yeah. that, right? That's yeah. what that's what we always go to. Um, but I actually like the red in this because it makes it a lot more aggressive. Yeah. Um, and I like the, the the red cards that you're able to include in them, like Hate Mirage. Um, I I think it adds a, a different element uh, to the usual you know tristani deck that just sits back populates makes a uh, makes a ton of life and just doesn't really do do much you know you throw like your ghostly prison out make sure nobody's hitting you and then just start hitting hitting people with the tokens once you have enough (laughs) this one i uh, i feel like you can have a lot more fun with because it's a lot more aggressive you can create extra combat steps to populate multiple times like i i I really like this this uh, commander it rewards you for being aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And so I actually I'm on uh, on Magic Online right now. I'm playing a, a Brutaclad deck, and that is a it's a blue red um, artifact creature that makes tokens and then gives all your tokens haste and then lets you turn one of your tokens into all of your tokens. So there's a ton. Uh, like Eddie was saying, there's a ton of red cards that actually care about tokens. And one of them I actually I wrote down for this this deck in particular for Gearid that isn't in the deck. It's called Flame Shadow Conjuring. It's an enchantment for three and a red. It says whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can pay a red. If you do put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of that creature, that token gains haste and then exile it to get the end step. So basically, you could play Dramo if you have this out, you can play your Dramoka, pay a red, make a copy of it, attack with Gearid, make another Dramoka copy, which actually wouldn't make sense because Dramoka is a legendary. But you can do this with other big creatures that do the same effect. So you can have non-legendary dragons or non-legendary creatures and just make a copy and have Gearid make copies, which is cool. Splinter Twins, I think, is a must in this deck. <laughs> Splinter Twins is a good card. Um, there's another card. What's the Tempt? Oh, man, what's the red Tempt card? Temple of Vengeance. Temple of Vengeance, I think, is a great card. And I'm surprised. Actually, I don't know. if I don't think it's in this deck. And I'd be yeah. surprised if it is. Um yeah, it's not. So, Tempt with Vengeance is one of the Tempt cards. Let me just pull it up. Tempt with Vengeance. So, Tempt with Vengeance is uh, X and red. Uh, it says, Tempting Offer. Put X 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens onto the battlefield. For each opponent, uh, uh, each opponent may put X 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens into the, with haste onto the battlefield. And for each player who does, you then get to put another x11 one, one elemental token so it's the same thing as the green one where if you look for a land then the person who cast it looks for a land but you just get tokens and you just flood the board with tokens uh so like eddie was saying i think adding the red to this is incredible for that aggressive like if you want to play tokens but you want to be aggressive this is the this is the commander for you i think so i think it's good i like the red i like the red all right cool so uh would we build it uh for me I wouldn't. Uh, I have some token decks. I think they're cool. I think they're fun. I'm a dirtler. I like to dirtle around. I'd rather be spe- slinging spells than making tokens. Uh, though I do like my Amara, my Amara token deck. I think that's fun. But uh, so yeah, I, personally, not for me. Chris, what do you think? Probably not. I do. I, I do like playing Naya. Though they are a good color combination, in my personal opinion, especially for the, the theme that's on on hand here. Uh, personally, just not a fan of it personally. <laughs> Uh, I'd rather go towards the Selesnya aspect of doing the populate build. The Tristani is, it's hands down far superior to this when it comes to the populate format itself. I do, again, I will agree with the fact that the red does add the overall benefit to the deck, make it more aggressive and more forthcoming. 
but I still personally feel I wouldn't build this as uh, my go-to. All right. What do you guys think, Josh, Eddie? Would you build it? Go ahead, Eddie. Go ahead, Josh. Oh, all right. Well, <laughs> I'll take it, though. Um, so I'm considering it, um, and it's only because I bought the deck, to be honest. Um, it's not really my style of play, but I think it could be cool to have something when I'm trying to reach outside the norm yeah. to play with. So so I'm considering building building around it just because, you know, I bought it and I can upgrade the deck fairly inexpensively. Yeah, I think that's one of the cool things about this deck is that it's upgradable without having to take... I think this one's the most upgradable without having to take things out. Like, I think yeah. you can put stuff in... Like, only take a few cards out and put some... You know, put a few in and it'll still be good. So. Outside of the lands. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Completely yeah, change lands the lands. Are awful. Change them out. Yeah. Get rid of them. Yep. <laughs> All right, Josh, what do you think? Um, I bought the deck and I actually like it a lot. Um, it's super aggressive. Um, it rewards you for being aggressive. Um, the whole token theme, I never played with tokens. Um, I'm more of a planeswalker, legendary creature guy. Um, but I like it. I mean, I kind of, I kind of see the challenge to step outside of my norm. I want to build it and see how powerful I can really make it without making it super competitive with adding like mana crypts and mana vaults. I want to see how strong I can make it. And then Chris is always telling me I got to stop making OP decks. So yeah, I think this will be, be the go-to. Every deck you need to, to have a mana crypt, mana vaults, mox diamond in every single build. You know? <laughs> so um, I think it's really cool. A really cool concept of, you know, being able to kind of like cheat tokens in and keep like the cards, I say, exile to end a, uh, end a, end a battle step. Um, you can keep it by yeah. populating. I think it's a pretty cool mechanic, um, and it's a, it's a fun deck for me. I, I really like like playing it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I think this deck needs a sundial real bad. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the sundial. I, I can't remember the casting cost, but it's just like end the turn. It's it's two. Just two. So yeah, it's two, and then sundial um, of the infinite. Infinite. If I remember correctly, it's yeah. two, and then it's one to tap and end the turn. Yeah, and basically anything that says exile end of turn, you don't. You just keep it because you end the turn and there's no end step. So it's great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. So that's that's Geared, everybody. That's the lead singer. Uh, but we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep moving on. The next one, and this is the one I'm actually out of all of them. This this is the one that I like the most. All right. So we're talking now about Atla Palani, Nest Tender. Uh, she is one in Naya, so one red, green, white for two three legendary creature human shaman, and she has the ability of two and tap to create an O one green egg creature token with Defender. Uh, and whenever an egg you control dies, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in any random order. Excuse me, in a random order. Not in any order, in a random order. Um, this one's cool. I like this one. You're, you're cheating out mana cost for creatures, and I think that's really fun. And it's a dirtle deck. You can just kind of surprise, make huge creatures. I'm all for it. Uh, I want to I make a dino deck out of this. That's what I would I like to do. I think it's a... Yeah, I think it's a faster um, and more efficient mile the anima, anima deck. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's like two in red, green, white, and you pay five. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You pay, pay six. six. Yeah. Yeah, you get a creature yeah. with five power toughness, but like this one is more versatile because it doesn't yeah. have to have the power. Well, with my arm, you only look at the top five, uh, six cards. Yeah, this you can just yeah, keep so, going so you until can you get something. Blank. Yeah, so you can draw a blink with that. so many times in that, too. Yeah. Yes. So, so I think this is a more efficient version of that. Yeah, I think this is great. I love, like, I would definitely put just beefy dinos, uh, just cool, st you know, the, the typical Ulamog, um, Emmercool, just the, you know, the big beater Eldrazi's, I think is great in here. Um, but actually, I was watching, who is, uh, Jumbo Commander, and he did a video on this deck, and something I thought was a really good point is that he's worried that people are going to overload this with too many egg creatures, because there's a ton of just, like, creature types that are egg. And, like, the worst thing you could do would be to sack an egg. To only go to, into another to egg? To cycle into another egg. Oh, I was like, that that's a stink. great idea. So, and I'm, I'm taking this from him because I think this is a really good idea. So, credit to Jumbo Commander. Um, but he he said to put shapeshifters in this deck. Or changelings. Changelings, yeah. So, Chris, similar to the deck that you built uh, for the... So, so... The first person that I, I heard mention that was the command quarters when it was previewed. So the command quarters, he uh, mentioned using a changeling deck. Uh, around, there's, there's only technically three eggs that are in Naya. Yeah. 
So by using changelings, technically you have an additional roughly 12 to 15, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, that way, what he also mentioned, Jumbo, was the fact that you need to not focus solely on just a creature base. If you overfill the deck with just creatures, uh, you're not going to really get much value out of it. Yes, you can keep second egg after egg after egg, but the way I would see it is you'd want to go do eggs, changelings, slash slave shifters, and then have maybe five or six non variants of those that are your big creatures like the Emrakul, the Ulamog, the Gristlebrand uh, Gristle style, like big, big fatties, you know? Grizzlebrand's where... band, by the way. No, no I know, but I just say, like, but that kind of style yeah, of yeah. large creature where at that point you just you just cycle, 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 cycle until you get to that point and you go off at like turn one or two. I would literally just build this deck with a bunch of doubling seasons, anointed processions, yeah. a tons of ramp. Um, I'd keep it down to maybe like 15 to 20 creatures five of which are going to be like the big ones and then the other 10 being just a few changelings that way you're cycling a lot faster basically you're ramping up as much as possible and have an untap effect so you can do multiple you can get more eggs in there a lot of sack outlets that way you're guaranteed to get to those big guys a heck of a lot faster yeah i actually like that point because if you put less big creatures or just less creatures in general you're gonna get to the ones you need. Yeah. You're not, you're not gonna have so much uh, gap, you know, because you, yeah. you might get like a, a creature you don't need. That's like a be like a one one or something bad for the situation you're in. Yeah. If you have like a Ulamog, which is almost good for like every every situation every scenario, you know, you'll get you have a better chance of getting to him. Yeah. You um, just less creatures. You just want to make sure you have a way to win. I think with with a, a strategy like that, because you know, I'm just picturing you have five beaters. Platinum angel. Yeah, yeah, you want like to put that. something into that as protection or, or makes your things indestructible or, you know, whatever, because I would hate to, like, egg into, you know, uh, like, two you big can't dinosaurs. Get indestructible. <laughs> What's that? You can't, get, you can't get indestructible because then your eggs wouldn't die, so you wouldn't be able to get the good things. You can sack, you can sa things. You can sack them. You can sack like, them. I literally do, like, a Platinum Angel, and Platinum Angel, because you, uh, your opponents can't win, you can't lose. So use stuff like that or, like, or um, Light Steel Colossus, where it's Infect. Yeah. You, you need like, to I would just yeah. stupidly stupid creatures that like would win on them the turn they play themselves. Basically, you yeah. want to have a uh, enlightened tutor to look for lightning greaves and then egg into a uh, blight steel. <laughs> yeah, and then just kill somebody out of nowhere. Um, or like, could you imagine having? Oh man, this is Magic of Christmas Land. Could you imagine having? Uh, what is it? Um, what's that myriad sword? Oh my god. Um, blade of cells. Blade of cells. Blade of cells. If you had a blade of cells attached to a blight steel, and then you just swing, and now you have a, you have four <laughs> blight steel colossus or three blight steel colossus is killing everybody. Oh man, that's mean. That's like that sounds like fun. I want to do that. I'm gonna do that. There are I would, would I would I would cry if you did that to me. <laughs> I would honestly cry. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a cool deck. I think you can definitely break this. I think uh, I think it'd be a lot of fun though. I think uh, I mean the token strategy for the first guy for Geared is cool. Uh, the other guy, the the goat person, is just meh. Uh, so that this egg strategy, just like cheating out big creatures, I think is a lot of fun. So uh, out of all the ones in the deck, this this one would go to you know this one's my favorite out of all of them. How about you guys? Yeah. What do you think? Besides I, Geared, I think it'd be my favorite too. Yeah. This is this is I think the best of the entire deck personally. Before you can go over the other ones, this is in my opinion the best one. Yeah. I think this this one could be a heck of a lot of fun, especially I know I know you guys were talking about just building it with like really big creatures, but um maybe put, putting some sort of like tribal theme to it could be a, yeah. a heck of a blast too. I would do dinosaurs I, with this. Yeah. 100%. Um dinosaurs would be amazing. Throw Gishart in yeah. there. Oh my god. I think, I think a lot of fun. Is, a, is a good is a good strategy for this guy. If you want to have fun with it, if you're just looking to like, you know, have a good time and make a fun well, deck. It also lines up because dinosaurs come from eggs, you know, like yeah. the whole yeah. like. Mm -hmm. It just goes with it. Well, this this creature definitely came from like lore wise. This creature came from uh, Ixalan. Oh, 100 percent. Even the artwork. Yeah, the artwork, the the you know the dino eggs, just that they, she's got that uh, shaman. Uh, headdress that you saw on a couple Exelon cards, so it's cool. Yeah. I th I think this is also like the most versatile of the of the what, four. Yeah. Because 
you can make the super jank. You can make this like if you're playing with friends that have a jank deck, so you can have the super jank, or you can make it to like an eight or nine on the power level. You know, depending on what your play group is, this is very versatile. I think. Yeah, I agree. All right, so I think we kind of answered if we'd build it. It sounds like we'd all take a crack uh, at the Atla deck. Yeah, um, definitely. I would definitely build it. Uh, I think it could be a lot of fun. I would go the Dino route just to make it, you know, a little bit more dirtily and, and have fun with it like that. So, so cool. All right. All right, so that is Atla. That is Atla. So next, we're moving on to the final three-color commander of this deck, the final three-color commander of this one. Uh, and he is Marisi, Breaker of the Coil. I really feel like they wanted to make a Game of Thrones reference here, and they just couldn't. Um, <laughs> but anyway, Marisi, Breaker of the Coil, is one in Naya, so four mana again, one red, green, and white for a 5-4 legendary creature, Cat Warrior. This guy here says your opponents can't cast spells during combat, eek, and then whenever creatures you control deals combat damage to a player, goad each creature that player controls. So what goad is, is until your next turn, these creatures attack each combat if able, and attack a player other than you if able. So you can just force your opponent's creatures to attack each other while you're just sitting there behind whatever wall you're building. Uh, and, and getting whatever resources ready to make a counteroffensive. So well, you wouldn't be sitting behind a wall with this one. Well, no, I'm saying like um, you would be creating a wall while people. No, are... but that's that's literally what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. You you have to attack out, so you wouldn't be setting up and you wouldn't be setting up anything for them to like that's stop true. attacking you. You wouldn't need to. Yeah, it wouldn't be, pill be pillow fort is what I'm saying. You you'd be able to just like be very aggressive and attack out, and as long as you're hitting everyone, you get to gold all their creatures, so that all of their creatures start hitting each other, which leaves them open for more attacks for you to hit and hit them again. That's true. So this is a a really interesting card. Yeah, goad is a is a mechanic we've uh, we don't see too much. I mean, there's no not friend... unless Jim is playing it. Yeah, yeah not unless Jim's playing, <laughs> but he doesn't play Grunzo anymore. He just play. He has uh, the other guy, the other goblin. He goes uh, with Cranko. Cranko, yeah. Cranko, yeah. But, so any, every now and then. but he put he put Grenzo. Grenzo in is it. in the deck, yeah. So we're yeah. talking about <laughs> Grenzo Havoc Reaker, or Havoc Razor, excuse me. Uh, it's a um, two two legendary creature, goblin rogue. It says whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, choose one. Go target creature that player controls or exile the top card of that player's library. Uh, until end of turn, you may cast that card and spend mana as though it was mana of any color to cast it. So it's almost the same idea as Marisi, only it's not all creatures. It's just one that you're targeting, but uh, depending on how many creatures hit. Um, so a similar well, idea. No, 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 no. It's, it's um, all creatures and opponent controls. So the Grenzo, though, is, is go target creature. Oh, you're talking about Grenzo. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. So Grenzo is target creature versus Marisi, which is all. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think Marisi is better in this situation. Definitely. Uh, which is cool. So, I mean, yeah, I think the goad mechanic is interesting. I think it came up in Conspiracy too. Um, but, it, you know, I don't think there's enough goad mechanics out there. I think there needs to be more. So I'm glad they put one on a new card. I'm glad goad's yeah. back. I see nothing to find with it. It's, it's cool, but it's, uh, it's whatever, basically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think this was the, 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 the card I'm the most meh about in the whole deck. Yeah. Um, I mean, goad is cool. Uh, I think, Eddie, what you were saying, just, you know, have everybody attacking out, leaving leaving you open to attack in. Oh, it speeds up the game like crazy. It does. But that's so annoying. Like, just, oh, man, I got to attack. That's because you only like Spellslinger style decks. Not only, but, no, I agree. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I like to dirtle more. I don't want to be attacking in. I, I like to yeah. choose my attacks. I attack when it's it's beneficial, not just to do it. No I will can, say, no though, that that card every. that got printed in this deck, Disrupt Decorum, is crazy. Disrupt Decorum. Um, yeah, it's, it. it's two red red for a sorcery that says gold all creatures you don't control. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That that card's nuts. That's Havoc. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put it on the cyclonic rift scale, but it almost does the same thing for a turn. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that actually like, that came out in yeah. twenty seventeen. Oh, last uh two, two years. years ago then. Yeah, that yeah, came yeah. out in the I think that's the vampire deck. I don't know. It's one of the 2017 it? ones. I have that then. Yeah, it's in it's in one I of the 2017 decks. Um, yeah, actually, I wrote down that card <laughs> for this deck, too. This that card is so good. It is really good. Uh, I also have um, on here Odric Master Tactician. Uh, it says, first strike cool. whenever Odric Master Tactician and at least three other creatures attack. Uh, you choose which creatures block this combat and how those creatures block. 
So basically, you can just as long as you have three creatures and you're attacking with Eldrick, you're guaranteed to get a hit, which is yeah. cool. So you're guaranteed goads. So that's your that's your way to to get into everybody to make that chain start happening. It's cool. But yeah, I, it's just a it's just a I, I'm not psyched. About, I'm not gonna build this one. Um, I'll put this in decks. Definitely, like if I'm playing a Nia deck, this will probably go in it. Just as, and like, a utility even creature. That, I still don't even bother. I love playing Nia, and I still... I, I see no use in it. Yeah. I even play, like, like half my decks in my life have been Nia. You know? And I just don't care for... Yeah, I mean, it depends on the deck, but... Yeah. To all those that Man. don't already realize it, Chris is the Simon Cowell of our show. <laughs> it's always negative. <laughs> I hate it. Hey, I, I like Atla. <laughs> oh, I hate it. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> everyone loves Atla. Great. Yeah. Everyone loves Atla. So it does its job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I don't think we need to waste any more time on Marisy. Uh, does anybody have any final thoughts on Marisy before we continue? He's the so great. <laughs> he's, he's, he's fun. He's fun. Because if when you guys watch our Woo-hoo! gameplay video, you'll see why he's pretty fun. You make people do your dirty work for you. That's only because Primacon was out. Don't spoil it. <laughs> this whole part, Don't I'm just going to have one it. long sensor beep over the whole thing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> nah, that's good. But I don't think we fun. gave it's out. I don't think fun. we gave out too much info. Definitely check out that video. Yeah. Uh, once it's hey. out, we'll put a link in. So if it's if there's a link down there, you just go watch it. Watch uh, the video. If you like what I did with Marcy, maybe you'll build your own version of him. I don't know, but it's pretty fun. <laughs> All right. So. That's it. That's that's all the three color commanders. We're done with Marcy. We're throwing them away. We don't want to talk about them anymore. Uh, <laughs> we haven't. I on- bought it, but I don't want it. We have an honorable mention. Uh, this isn't as good as Crick from the the Rakdos deck. Um, no one's good as Crick. But we thought it was a, a a cool. It was a new. It's a new legendary, but it's one of the two color. We thought it was really cool, so we decided to to put it on the list here. So uh, we're talking about Tangrath First Mate. So Tangrath First Mate is two and Gruel. So two red green. There's no white, so you can't just put this as the commander of the deck. You have to actually build around it. Uh, It's a 5-5 legendary creature, Minotaur Warrior. It says, Tangrath First Mate can't be blocked by one or more creatures. Whenever an opponent attacks attacks with one or more creatures, if Tangrath is tapped, you may have that opponent gain control of Tangrath until end of combat. If you do, choose a player or Planeswalker that opponent is attacking. Tangrath is attacking that player or Planeswalker. Whew! It's a lot of words on that card. That's a big paragraph. That was a ton of words. That was a huge paragraph. So basically it's saying that um, only one creature can block it, but also if an opponent is attacking and Marisil is tapped... Not Marisil, excuse me. You mean... yeah? <laughs> Marisil, Marisil is a card I'm thinking about for this deck. But anyway, if Tangrath is tapped, you can give it to your opponent when they're attacking to attack whoever they're attacking. So it's it's a <laughs> that sounded really basic, Corey. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, this guy's really cool. <laughs> All right, Simon. <laughs> so it is cool. cool, but I I don't I don't think this is a good commander. No, he's, he's going to the ninety nine. He's the the idea that you can give somebody else another player on the board your creature to attack. That's a really cool mechanic for me. I don't think I've seen that in other any other cards I've played. Um, but no, but this is really cool, Chris. I think this See, is your. I actually. Oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. I think this would be a good choice for Chris's Voltron because you could just equip it out and yes. then give it to your give it to a buddy and then they can commander damage for you. Yeah. See, that's where I think this comes in crazy is make it a make it a Voltron strategy. Throw a ton of equipment, um, all the swords that you can think of. Throw them in this deck attach them to this, reap all the benefits of their attack steps, use mm-hmm. mechanics like goad to force attacks um, so that you know he's attacking every turn. And if you can get him to ta- to attack literally four times in a round, just once for yours and once for each other player at the table, you've just attacked in for 20 damage. That's crazy. That's, and that's you've, you've almost killed somebody with commander damage. And that's not counting if there's any equipment on him that gives them exactly. buffs, you know? Yeah. See, I thought Chris was actually going to like this. Uh, card of all the cards this would probably be if if i were ever gonna build a, a voltron deck other than that green black one i have this would probably be the one that i'd go with 
because um, yeah. it's unique. It's very, very different from a, a typical Voltron strategy. Yeah. It also adds a different dynamic to uh, politics. You could be like, yeah. "Hey, uh, oh, yeah, Chris, Chris, if you at if you attack Corey right now, I'll give you my Minotaur real quick. You know, that's another extra five damage. Yeah. You know, I don't like that. I don't like that deal at all. <laughs> that's a great idea. Let's not do that deal. Let's skip that one. Maybe I need to switch out Ural. But what's the what's the swords that makes you draw a card and untap lands? Uh, it's discard uh, a card and untap. It's um. Feast and famine. Yeah. So imagine, imagine your opponent swinging in every single turn. So four different, four different turns. Your opponent swings in with that in there, and you can just start casting instants off of your untapped lands. Like that's that's pretty cool. But now, do you get the? Do you get? You the do trigger? because you own the equipment, yeah. so you get the equipment triggers. Your opponent doesn't. Okay. And commander damage follows the commander, so yeah. commander damage is still yeah, they, like that's they only, that's crazy. They only control Tangrath. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. They don't control the equipment, or own it, or for own that it. matter. Yep. Yeah. Would you guys build infect with him? No. <laughs> there's not enough. There's not enough. In, there's not enough infect in. Re- okay, hold on. First of all, <laughs> rewind. I I have one infect deck, okay, and I don't even play it anymore. I took it apart, and in in uh, Volrath here, I only have one infect card. That's a lie. I have two infect cards, okay. So. <laughs> so he actually has five. Two. That he tutors for with five, five different like, tutors. deck is straight infect that he just built. So, see, this is why this is why we don't want to play that deck. Yeah, don't play that deck online. It's it's. It, I, I'm so, tweaking it. It might become a little too OP. So I have Skitherix. Actually, I think that's it. I think I only have Skitherix in this Just deck. Skittles, huh? Just Skittles. So like I I I mean this this has nothing to do with this episode, but I I didn't build it the infect route. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to. I don't think it's fun. I don't think Infect's my, fun. Uh, my Yawgmoth deck, the one that I built on online, I'm building two versions of it. One of them is Infect. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, yeah. Infect is good. would be good with this commander, but I don't, I don't want to go that route. But anyway, yeah. I don't think there's enough Infect support in red and green to make this a good deck. I don't make Infect a good deck. No, not, a green semi, but it's more. It's not with red. Deck. You would You would need... like I, I think it would be good to put like a... Um, Crafted exoskeleton as an equipment. Equipped mm. creature has infect. I think that's good. But uh, as a yeah. effect, nah, nah, I'm good. Um, all right. So would we build it? Me, I wouldn't. I wouldn't build it. I'd put it in the ninety nine. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't build the deck around it. I don't know. How about you guys? I see it as more valuable as a commander than I do in the ninety nine. To be honest. Yeah. In that uh, regard, yeah. Just, just because of uh, the commander damage and. And being able to take advantage of things on multiple turns, um, it, it helps you to get ahead. Um, so, would I build it? I don't know yet. Um, but if I were to decide on building a Voltron strategy, this would probably be the card I go with. Interesting. Interesting. Josh, Chris? Um, Command or not 99, wouldn't build it, but still cool concept. Cool. I wouldn't build it. I mean, I'm keeping it in this deck. Does that count? <laughs> sure, sure, why not? You're not building it, but you're holding on to it. That's cool. Yeah. All right. So that is all of the brand new legendary creatures from the Primal Genesis Naya deck. So as always, this is the point of the show where we go around one by one and we pick who our favorite is uh, out of this deck, who we would pick to be our general if we were going to build it. Do we actually need to do that this time? I think it was. It I think it's pretty. For itself. I think it's pretty unanimous. So okay, why don't we go on three or like one, two, three, go? We'll all say it. Ready? Ooh. All right, ready? One, two, three. Atla. Tarngrath. Atla. Not oh joking, shit. Atla. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we all said Atla, right? Atla. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, it's Atla. You doing gear? Oh, did you? He's doing yeah. geared, Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. All right. All right. All right, Josh. That was unexpected. Geared. Well, okay, three, three out of four, Atla. Yeah, yeah. blind up finds a squirrel. Josh is wrong, but it doesn't matter. No, just <laughs> uh, Put in the comments who you think is right. You know it's us. So, yeah, speaking of, in the comments, who would you pick? Why would you pick them? Uh, let us know. We want to know. We want to hear from you guys. So, you know where it's at, right in that bottom piece. Um, all right, cool. So, I think we talked about this very briefly in the last video. So, we'll, we'll do it again for this one. Um so someone who is new to Commander, 
would you recommend this deck for him? Yeah. New to Commander. Yeah. 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 Because uh, I, I think it's a like big creature beat em up style of, of play and it could be a lot of fun for them. It'll be it'll be something where they feel like they're constantly doing something. Yeah. Yeah, and I the think combo, the combos that are there, like they're easy to understand. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I... like with uh other decks it can be a little more difficult to understand the concept behind it. Uh, like the Jeskai one, certain kind of builds. The uh, Rakdos one, certain kind of builds. This yeah. one's like, it's just, here you go. You yeah. make a token, copy it. I think when you get rid of black and blue, the simplicity factor of the deck goes up quite a bit. Yeah. So, uh, and I see that, I, I, I mean that, that. Boros players. I mean that in the simple, nicest way. Simple, yeah. simple. Yeah, Boros, what are you, you guys doing? guys are simple-minded. What are you That's doing? You Besides Feather, what, like, who are you playing? Get out of here. Um, <laughs> a lot of people. Aurelia? Fight me. Let's go. You know my Ural deck's good, all right? <laughs> your, your, is your Ural uh, Boros? I am. No, we said Boros. Black Blue. We said Boros. We said Boros. Boros. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Boros. Boros yeah. No, I took all my decks to pilot. Yeah. So, I yeah. I have my Akiri Slime Slinger. Fight me, Boros players. Come on. Um, your decks are awful. Is it bad? <laughs> is it bad? I taught I'm my just brother kidding. to... I'm just kidding. I taught my brother how to play Commander with a Boros deck. Because it was so so simple. No, I, I I I just talk some smack right there, but I, I don't think Boros decks are bad. Uh, I definitely think they're they're yeah, stream. As as they're led by Feather. Yeah, I think they're yeah <laughs> yeah. I think they're streamlined. <laughs> they definitely no. have they definitely have a, a, a niche where they're you know uh, what they want to do. Um, it's the card draws not there really. Yeah, and they're they're starting to come up oh, with ramp. some new yeah they're they're coming up with cards uh, to to give you that like um, smothering tides, uh, just to get that ramp. But you know whatever. Yeah, that's right. They're trying. They're trying so hard. Bless their little hearts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So we love you, Wizards. We love you, Boros players. Bossy. No, don't, don't, don't stretch it. That's, oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, that's all we have for today's video. Uh, if you really liked what you saw, please let us know in the comments below. And if you have the chance, please hit that thumbs up or subscribe. If you haven't, it really, really does help out. It means quite a lot to us. Uh, if you want to check out our other videos, our other C19 videos, I'm going to have them in the links below. Also, wherever the little eye is up in the corner, you can click on that and it'll bring up the whole playlist so you can watch any of the videos that you want. Um, and yeah, just leave us a comment. Let us know what you want to hear. Uh, now that we're out of C19 videos, uh, we need some some uh, tips. What do you guys want to see? What, uh, what kind of videos do you want to watch in the future? Uh, we have a, a couple gameplay videos coming out soon. Uh, we're doing a brawl series. Uh, the first episode of that is actually up right now, so you can click on that. Um, that one just has me, but we're doing one for each of us, so we'll have everyone else's coming out soon. And uh, yeah, so uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, any of you guys have anything you want to say before we head out? Take care. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Later.